As you and I take a closer look at network infrastructure devices, we're going to follow the guidelines of a bricklayer who's making a wall. And that is, we're going to start from the bottom at layer one, which is the physical layer of the TCP IP protocol suite. So we're going to start right here at the physical layer. Let's assume or presume that we have a computer that has done all the thinking about the application layer service, the layer four protocol and the ports and the layer three IP addresses and the layer two addresses. <laughs> and now we're ready to send that information on the network. Now, in this topology here, uh, this computer is connected directly to a switch. However, a switch is considered to be a layer two device. We'll take a look in the very next video why that is. But for layer one, we're gonna need a device that's not quite as smart. And there is a couple options that we have as a layer one forwarding device as a network infrastructure device. And one would be a hub, a layer one hub. So let's imagine we have a computer right here that's plugged into a hub. And then we also have, for example, a router, maybe, also connected into that hub. And then that router's got connectivity off to other networks. A layer one hub has no concept or idea about any type of addressing or framing or packets up higher in the protocol suite. All it does, it takes signals, little bits, ones and zeros that come in on one port and it forwards them out all other ports. So if we have a few other devices here, so this is device A, and this is device B, and this is device C, this is device D and this is device E. When one signal is sent in, one bit of data, the hub acts as a multi-port repeater, just takes the signal that came in and it repeats it on all the other ports. And so really a layer one hub is like the old days when we had like 10 base two with coaxial cable with devices that were physically connected to that cable. So logically the hub at layer one acts like a bus with everybody sharing the bandwidth there. And the difference is this is physically a bus topology and physically the hub would be a star with the hub in the center and then the actual devices that are connected to it making up the star part of that. So it's a logical bus but a physical star. Everybody who's connected to this hub is sharing basically a one lane road, which means that only one device can talk at a time. And if two devices try to talk at the same time, there's going to be a crash or a collision of those two signals that are trying to be sent. So with a layer one hub, which is acting as a multi-port repeater, it's like a one lane road. We can also think of that like a single collision domain. So let's imagine a road up here, a one lane road. So think of a collision domain like a one lane road where you can only have one car at a time on the road. And that's how it works with a hub and a bus topology here is that we can only have one device sending signals at any given time. And if two devices try to send signals at the same time, they're going to collide. So that's an example of having a single collision domain. Now, when we get to switches, we'll take a look at how switches change that. And a layer two switch, because it's more intelligent, can give us multiple roads. That way, multiple devices could talk at the same time. However, with a hub, with a single collision domain, it's also operating in what's called half duplex. That means that a device that's connected to the hub can send or receive, but because there's only one lane, we can't have a device that's sending and receiving at the same time. So let me share with you a topology where I have a hub and several networking devices so we can reinforce these concepts. So let's imagine we have these, we don't have to imagine, we have these three PCs here that are all sharing basically the bandwidth and are on the same network together using a hub at layer one to connect them all together. So there's our physical star. And if PC1 wanted to send some information, maybe it's doing a, an ARP request or sending a packet, and PC2 decides it also wants to do it at the same exact time, those packets, when they hit this hub, there's gonna be a crash. And that's because a hub, a layer one hub, is a single road, a single collision domain. And all these devices that are connected to it are effectively sharing that collision domain, sharing that road. And that's why in a hub environment with a layer one technology like a hub, the ethernet adapters, the network interface cards in these devices use a technique called CSMA slash CD. And let me break that down. Carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection is what that means. And here's how it works. Carrier sensing means that PC1 and PC2, before they, you know, step out onto the road, they are going to check and make sure it's clear. So they're both going to listen to see if anybody else is sending data at that same time. So that's the carrier sensing. The multiple access simply means that there's multiple devices that are or could be connected to this single collision domain. And the slash CD is collision detection. So if PC1 and PC2, they both do carrier sensing, they don't see anybody talking, they both send at the same exact moment, they're going to be able to identify that, hey, the signal I just sent got crashed into something, and that's the collision detection part. So with layer one technologies like Hub, we use carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection. We also are forced to use half duplex, which means a device like PC2 can send, 
or receive, but there's no option for it to send and receive at the same time. So that's called half duplex. When we train the computers that they either are gonna be sending data or receiving data, but not do both simultaneously. The layer one aspect is the fact that the hub doesn't have any clue or doesn't care about layer two addressing or layer three addressing or anything higher than that in the protocol stack. It just takes signals that come in on one port, sending each of those bits out on the other ports. So that's the multi-port repeater part. And that's fun to say, multi-port repeater part. And then if I clean this up just a little bit, let's talk about this last option right here, one broadcast domain. And to illustrate that, on IPv4 networks, we have the concept of a broadcast. A broadcast is like an all points bulletin. For example, let's say PC3 uh, needed to discover the layer two address associated with this router. And so it could do an ARP request and that's sent as a broadcast. So that broadcast, like all the other traffic on a layer one device, that broadcast would go in and that broadcast would be effectively forwarded to everybody on this network segment. So we can kind of think of it like a room that we have a whole bunch of people in and one person shouts, in this case of PC3, it's doing a broadcast and everybody else who's in that room has to listen to that. They don't have to process it. They don't have to spend the rest of their life thinking about it, <laughs> but they indeed are all going to hear it because in a layer one environment, besides having a single road that we're going to share as far as sending data, we also have a single broadcast domain. And when you think of a broadcast domain, again, just think of a room with a bunch of devices in it. And if one device yells or shouts or send a broadcast, the broadcast domain represents the limits of how many devices huh, are going to have to listen to that broadcast. And in the case of an ARP request, we would want everybody on that network to hear that ARP request because who knows what device owns the IP address behind it. So if everybody hears the ARP request and then the router has the IP address in question, the router can respond and everybody else can just say, ah, yeah, it wasn't for me. So as far as the TCP IP protocol stack and infrastructure devices that do forwarding, the hub would be an example of a layer one device. And hubs have multiple ports. We also have an option for getting a repeater. And a repeater could just take the signals that come in, the bits that come in on one side and send them out the other. And the signals that come in on this side, it could send out the other. So if we had a hub with just two ports, it could also be called just a repeater. However, hubs usually have several ports for all the devices that are connecting to it. And one other layer one type device that we might have in our networks maybe a media converter. For example, maybe a router has an ethernet port with copper, and we wanna convert that into light signals over fiber. So we can have a layer one device that's doing that conversion from the electrical signals over to light frequency. And that also could be considered to be involved at layer one from a protocol stack perspective. Now, as fun as that is to talk about hubs, uh, we don't use a lot of hubs anymore because they aren't that smart. They're just a multi-port repeater, they're just forwarding, Every bit they hear that comes in on one port, they forward out the others. So in most networks today, we're going to use something a little bit smarter at the center of our networks to connect all of our devices in. And that something smarter is called a layer two switch. And that, my friend, is what you and I get to look at in the very next video. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, Head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.